Our topic for this session is small bowel emergencies. Our first case is of Hinoch Schoenlein purpura. This manifests as small bowel wall thickening, usually hypodense and nodular. See a nice segment here with luminal narrowing. Lower down, additional nodular wall thickening and luminal narrowing, and some free pelvic fluid. On the coronals, this is really well appreciated. You can see multiple loops at a time and the extent of that nodular wall thickening. Here's that thickened involved loop and lower down. Again, luminal narrowing, hypodense nodular wall thickening. Very nicely shown there and there. And then again, that more proximal loop right here. Again, nicely demonstrated on the coronal. Where you can see many loops at once. All nodular hypodense wall thickening. So that is a pretty characteristic appearance of Hinox Schoenlein purpura. Our next case is of Putz Jaeger's polyposis with intussusceptions. There are multiple filling defects with vascular pedicles and mesenteric fat consistent with small intussusceptions. In addition, there are multiple polyps, which in most cases are acting as lead points. So again, you see a fatty vascular pedicle and multiple intraluminal polyps. These are present throughout the small bowel. There is a polyp and a small intussusception here on the right. There again the polyp, relatively higher density, dragging along with it, short segment of intussusception. You can see the upstream small bowel is severely narrowed. Here is our lower manifestation. You see the polyps at its tip and the intussuscepted vascular pedicle and mesenteric fat. So, that is a case of Putz-Jaeger's polyposis with intussusceptions. Our next case is a duodenal ulcer perforation. This is a posterior perforation with retroperitoneal extraluminal gas, and I have chosen it for its subtlety. This kind of retroperitoneal gas can track up along the IBC and be very small in quantity and very inconspicuous visually. Here is the extraluminal gas collection adjacent to the third portion of the duodenum and very easy to confuse with intraluminal gas unless you're paying close attention. Lower down you can see some duodenal wall hypodensity and thickening that might have called your attention to the fact that there is an inflammatory process. There again, the small foci of retroperitoneal gas and the wall thickening of the duodenum. Here is the wall thickening and just above it, those small foci of retroperitoneal gas and a tiny amount of oral contrast. It's really lying superior to the third portion of the duodenum. So that is a duodenal ulcer perforation involving the third portion of the duodenum and resulting in retroperitoneal gas. Our next case is an ingested wishbone with associated small bowel perforation. We have subdiaphragmatic gas, in this case, intraperitoneal. In the abdomen, there is extensive mesenteric stranding. Lastly, there is a short segment with small bowel wall thickening and an intraluminal density, around which much of the mesenteric stranding appears to center. Let's look first at the subdiaphragmatic gas foci. 
not as subtle as the preceding case, uh, but not overt. There's a small amount in the portal region as well. Let's look now at the mesenteric stranding all throughout the left aspect of the abdomen. Quite pronounced here. Lastly, let's view that intraluminal density, which you can see has two flanges there, comes to a point more superiorly. There's a little wall thickening involving that adjacent segment of the small bowel. You can definitely appreciate the wishbone appearance of that density on the cine. So this is a case of an ingested wishbone, or furcula. That is a turkey furcula. This is a common Thanksgiving mishap. Typically is related to the ingestion of alcohol as well. Otherwise, it's pretty hard to swallow down a whole turkey wishbone uh, without chewing. Our next case, a closed loop small bowel obstruction. This is a critical finding that you have to get familiar with. This is the appearance you're looking for, where the entire long segment of small bowel has all twisted around a single point. So you can see all the mesenteric vessels drawn together into one region. That usually results in pretty severe ischemia with wall thickening of multiple stacked loops of small bowel and mesenteric stranding as you see here to the left of the obstruction point. So appreciate those stacked loops of small bowel with marked hypodense wall thickening all along the left aspect of the abdomen. The mesenteric stranding is quite pronounced, but see how everything, especially the mesenteric vessels, are coming to a point right here in the left aspect of the abdomen. All of these findings undoubtedly adding up to a closed loop obstruction, a surgical emergency that requires uh, immediate intervention. So that is a case of a closed loop, small bowel obstruction. Our next case is a case of angioedema affecting the proximal small bowel and related to ACE inhibitor. You see there is a moderate segment of pronounced wall thickening and mild periintestinal stranding involving the proximal jejunum and perhaps the distal duodenum as well. This is a typical location for intestinal angioedema. It doesn't just occur in the laryngeal region. And this is a common uh, side effect of ACE inhibitor therapy, although, of course, there are hereditary forms as well. There is that moderate segment of small bowel thickening and mesenteric stranding. Again, very typical in appearance and location for angioedema. Our next case is of mural hemorrhage involving the small bowel. There is pronounced more hyperdense wall thickening involving a lengthy segment of small bowel and there is pronounced mesenteric stranding as well. Somewhat similar in appearance to the preceding case Although, again, the wall thickening is much more hyper-dense. We'll go back up through that so you can appreciate it. And there is an element, a more significant element, of obstruction. You can see that dilated proximal small bowel loop right there. So this, again, is a case of intramural hemorrhage related to a high INR for morphine therapy. You know, they say you should never treat your family members, and whenever I look at this case, I always laugh to myself, because once, many years ago, I gave my father-in-law an INR of 9, which is what this patient had as well, uh, in trying to treat him for a DVT. So he survived without any mural hemorrhage, however. 
Our last case is of scleroderma. This actually was an emergent presentation, although clearly it is a chronic illness. There is consolidation and pronounced bronchiectasis in the lung bases, most notably on the right, and appreciate that flattened, misshapen, patulous distal esophagus, which still contains oral contrast. Another view of the consolidated lung base with bronchiectasis. And in the lower abdomen, a very impressive demonstration of small bowel fold proliferation, the so-called hidebound small bowel, a classic diagnostic feature of scleroderma. There is a magnified view of it for you. You can see the numerous thin small bowel folds are uh, multiplied compared to normal. Let's first appreciate that patulous esophagus. You can see containing oral contrast, flattened and dilated. Obviously, the bronchiectasis is pronounced and may represent basilar inflammation or, more likely, given its location, chronic aspiration. Now let's go to the lower abdomen where you can appreciate the proliferation of those small bowel folds, almost taking on the appearance of wall thickening. When you look in fine detail, you can appreciate that that is the accordion-like apposition of small bowel folds. So that is a case of scleroderma with hidebound small bowel. And that concludes this session on small bowel emergencies.